today's topic, why Christians are such hypocrites. That's a question that more and more of us are asking and it needs to be asked. And I'm going to tell you right now, as someone who was a former youth pastor, um, a former person who was on the church board member list, um, who was in the higher echelons of a worldwide church cult, I can say with confidence that this whole thing with Christians being hypocrites is because Christians are using their religion to cover up who they really are. Now, you may have your mom may be a Christian, your dad may be a pastor or whatever. I'm not here to convince anybody. If you don't believe what I'm saying, then that's your prerogative. And that's that's the very essence of freedom that we should have as human beings that our birthright is to believe whatever we want to believe whatever is true for us is what's true not something in a book not something someone says is true and we have to believe unless we're going to hell so you can believe what you want to believe but what I what I'm saying here is something that I know people are feeling I know they're seeing it and I just want to speak for those who may still be in the church system whatever denomination it is it doesn't matter because as long as you're caught in that paradigm you are not able to speak your own truth there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of hypocrisy and hypocrisy is basically contradiction because there are just so many things in Christianity that are so contradictory and one video cannot possibly do that justice but I'm talking about the very character of the people when we're talking about hypocrites we're talking about you know the kind of people we think of like you know the girl who's a the girl who's a, a whore, you know, on Saturday and then comes to church and prays for forgiveness and it's, you know, I mean, that whole two-faced thing. And that's the danger of, that's, that's what Christianity is about because think about it. What kind of a person are you that you act one way and then you go to church and you get your forgiveness, you know, your sins forgiven. Who, what kind of person would actually use that? What kind of person would live that way? And that's what Christianity does. It gives, it gives horrible people an excuse. It gives them, that's not an excuse. What am I trying to say? It, it gives horrible people a chance to be good people. It makes them feel as if they can act however they want to act and then come and do a specific act, throw some money in the collection plate, say some amens, hallelujahs, amens, if you're Catholic, do your Eucharist, whatever it is that's part of whatever denomination you're rolling with and everything is okay. There's no accountability for being an asshole when you are a Christian. And it's so contradictory because then you have the whole heaven and hell thing and, you know, and the saved and lost. But it's all inclusive. It's like it's very exclusive but inclusive at the same time because really in order to be a Christian all you have to do in some churches is go up to the altar and you know if you play along just right and you know play play your cards right you know they'll think that you really mean it and you know and you you pray Jesus into your heart and you're saved or some churches it's you know like I grew up Catholic 
and we had to go through our rites of passage to be considered saved. You know, we had our infant baptism, and then, you know, in grade school, I went to a Catholic school. So, you know, we had to do penance and we had to do confirmation. And those were traditions and ceremonies and rituals that confirmed our being saved. And that made no sense to me cause, because I remember the day of my confirmation ceremony and you get a, you have a white dress, you wear, you wear a little crown on your head. It's a, it, it, it's a, it's a whole big thing. And I remember standing outside with my family members after the ceremony it, it let out and you know I had they gave you they gave you a Bible you take a you take a, a Christian name and you, you know it becomes part of your name and you know and I remember the adult standing there and I can't remember who if it was my mother or my aunt but you know they were saying well you're a Christian because you're Catholic because that was the understanding that if you're a Catholic you're a Christian and I, I remember saying well no I'm not why does that mean that I mean I'm not a Christian I mean even back then I understood that it that that was just slapping a label and it wasn't that I was a horrible person it was just that I felt like to say that I was a Christian which was held up to be this high ideal you know I thought it was something that had to be earned it wasn't just some label you slap from doing a ceremony going through the motions and as I grew up that's what I saw um, as I maneuvered through the years and belonged to different churches of different denominations I saw the same thing people I knew in different religions and in, you know in different belief systems I saw the same thing I saw this hypocrisy I saw this bipolarism because when you are a Christian you are bipolar it you know if you are not really sincere because the nature of it is you have to deny yourself to follow Jesus that is part of the playbook when you look in the Bible and that is expected that you deny you deny your emotions you deny your wants you de deny yourself to carry your cross and follow Jesus that's plainly written in the New Testament Gospels so what does that mean that means that people like myself who were sincere who are authentic people had to deny their authenticity to follow Jesus and people who were complete assholes part of my French here some of you may be sensitive to cuss words if you're still in the church but you can be a complete a-hole and still be a be a Christian. It, it you know it allows you to do that. So so truly righteous people, and I don't mean morally righteous, but I mean people who are who say what they mean, they mean what they say, just authentic people. That's what I mean by righteous. Righteous people have to deny their righteousness to conform with the rules of this religion in this particular church and all their other unspoken rules and people who are not righteous fake people phony people people who are emotionally messed up they are people who um, and we all are emotionally messed up let me, let me let me just mention that real quick that it's not that you know there are people who have no issues and people who have issues. We all have some kind of issues, things, things, places, areas of ourselves where we we need to grow. Um, we're constantly evolving, so growth is just part of that process, and we all have flaws. The thing is, is that Christianity actually it blocks you from working on yourself when you are in a religion it is dogmatic I don't care how nice the pastor is I don't care if it's a family that was my church they said we are a family we're, we're, we're more family than your blood family is what they said and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter about 
you know, your tight knit group or how great your pastor is or any of that stuff. What matters is, you know, is this working for you? And the truth is, you have a lot of bipolarism in the church because people are not dealing with the real root issue because the church is concerned about membership so they're trying to get you saved and I was on I was I was an evangelist so I understand like I was behind the scenes planning things planning events I was out there uh, quote unquote evangelizing or proselytizing as some people call it on many different levels so believe me it is a organization like any business model where they have to accrue more membership to keep it going more members means more money flowing in more revenue so you have to understand that that you know that is the goal the goal is not to make to help people to be better the goal is to just get people in and to keep people obeying the bylaws of the church or the group and a lot of people are in denial about that and if you're in denial about that and you're in the whole not my church thing that's your prerogative I'm not going to argue with you but here's the thing it creates bipolarism it creates mental illness schizophrenic type of since schizophrenia because you're one way here and you know I literally saw my roommates we would go to church they would be one way at home come to church be a completely different person I'm looking at her like you got I've got to, you got to be kidding me then we come home she's another person you know no one sees that person like oh she's so joyful she's so loving she loves the Lord she's so and she comes home and she is this monster and I, you know there's just this there's just this disconnect between who you really are how you really feel what you really think what you really believe and what the church root feels what the church thinks and what the church believes and if you're going to be accepted by this group by this church if you you know you are going to have to conform to what they think feel and believe and what they do so you have to deny your actions your your thoughts your heart and you think you're not going to be bipolar you think there's not going to be some sort of insanity going on but that's only a problem for people who are authentic if you aren't authentic if you are someone who is a complete a-hole it's perfect because you can act however you want and then go to church and then slap a label on you sprinkle some holy water say a prayer do a jig sing in the choir throw money in the plate swipe jokes with the pastor and his wife babysit their kids whatever you, whatever it is because the church doesn't care they're not interested in you growing as a person they're not interested in your best interest they're interested in what you bring to the table for them and as soon as you stop being useful which is what happened with me when you begin to be and I saw this with other people as well when you stop being useful to them monetarily um, service wise they can't use you you're no benefit to them then you're just a drain and I've had the I, I actually had the pastor's wife say that you know but she's the CEO of a company in the end of the, at the end of the day so that's just it's just straight biz that's the square biz of the situation but yeah that's pretty much I guess what I wanted to say about the hypocrisy of religion because that is what the hypocrisy of Christianity in particular is that there is this there is this no fall clause so you so you can do all kinds of things wrong and still be justified the way it's set up you know and you'll hear all of these arrogant stupid things people will say well God knows my heart 
It doesn't matter what they do. God always knows their heart, and that's just a no-fault clause for them. Plausible deniability at its finest. But then, if they, if you do the same thing they do, they have the right to call you on it because they're speaking the truth in love, as it says in Ephesians. I believe it's Ephesians. So, you know, it can be the Bible can be used as a weapon. Depending on your your standpoint, you can use it as a weapon as you see fit to meet your advantage, to give you the upper hand. It gives you the ability to look down on people and still be a complete and total jerk. You can be arrogant, you can be non-apologetic, and I saw that a lot. I saw a lot of people who were non-apologetic, who did all kinds of things that you know, to people, they were very selfish, they were very self-centered, they were mean, I mean, you just can, you name it, but you, but they couldn't be called on it, because God knows their heart, and Jesus said to forgive one another, and all of that, and it's okay, so it gives them an out, they don't, they don't have to be held accountable for their actions. The only time they're held accountable is when it's useful to the church as a whole. Because we had a lot of we had a lot of situations where we would get with people and we would admonish them with the Bible and we would tell them they were wrong and they were being prideful and they were sinning and they needed to repent. So it's it, it that was happening at the same time a lot. It was pretty much every week you were getting with someone to do that to to tell them they were wrong about something but again the end goal was never to make them be a better person not that you can make someone be a better person but that's the whole point it's like even the even getting with people to call them out on their sinful behavior the whole agenda as a christian is to make them conform to this scripture and the Bible that you're showing them conform to the church's rules, to the obvious ones and the unspoken ones, but it's to get them under your control, to control them. It's not to help them, it's not to empower them to go within themselves and make those changes. And even if they decided not to, to go, okay, that's on you, but I'm just telling you the truth. You know, and there's a lot of saying the truth in love, but that's that's a load of crap because that really never happened. And so we have to talk about that. We have to have an honest conversation in the world today because we still got millions of people talking about they're Christians and they're bipolar as could be, running around acting one way here and another way at church and still getting to slap the label on themselves that they're saved and they're somehow holy and they're better than you because you don't go to church on Sunday or you didn't decide to get your child baptized or you didn't get yourself baptized or you don't give money to the church whatever I mean the list goes on and on but whatever it is they think that you need to do, that they believe you should do, that they've been taught and brainwashed to believe is what saves you, they they feel like they're justified because they do these things. Or, you know, just because they show up to church once a month, they feel sanctified, even though even though they don't have integrity, even though they say they're going to show up and they don't show up, even though they lie and they cheat, you know, or I mean, they don't have a they don't have good character. Their heart is not good. But because they have this label of Christian, somehow we're all supposed we're all supposed to say, "Well, God knows your heart." You know, it, it absolutely not. And we got to start calling people on that and being honest and saying, hey, that just doesn't fly with me. Even if it's a family member or your own mother or something, it's just 
don't get into arguments with Christians because they're absolutely insane. Like I said, they're bipolar, they're hypocritical. So they don't follow logic. And I was, I was a Christian and I didn't follow logic. I wasn't critically analyzing things. And so when I would talk to people and get into debates, it was just rhetoric that I had been programmed with. So they're just running their programs, they're running their software that was installed in them, and that's all they're doing. It's nothing that they critically thought about and then came back to and said, okay, I'm, I'm consciously choosing to believe this for X, Y, and Z. So keep that in mind, and yeah, the hypocrisy is real, and we just need to call people out on it when the time when the opportunity arises uh, because it really it really is not in people's best interest the church doesn't care about people they're only cogs in the wheel they're only batteries to the machine and the truth is if they don't care we can't bend over backwards trying to care for them they have to come to that conclusion themselves but we should be damned if we're gonna sit there and let them you know, do whatever they do to us and other people and give them a pass. So, until next time, peace.